You're listening to 17 Karat K-Pop. For more about this show, as well as my other podcast, How to Stand, visit 17karatkpop.weebly.com. There you'll find episode guides, as well as additional reading, more exclusive content, tons of great stuff. And never miss an update, an album review, interview, etc. by subscribing to the free newsletter, howtostand.substack.com. You could also become a paying subscriber on Substack, and that means you're supporting an independent creator and become part of a community, howtostand.substack.com. Enjoy the show! Hey guys, really excited to share with you my talk with Woojay today. There were a few technical difficulties, so I'm just going to ask my questions now and play his responses. So that's why it doesn't sound like a genuine conversation back and forth, because this is a redo. I hope that's not too distracting. You could also check out the video version of this interview, where the questions just show up on the screen, at howtostand.substack.com and 17 karatkpopweeblycom the blog tab, as well as in the interview tab. That's also where you'll find my recent video interview with Rolling Quartz as well, and ideally, fingers crossed, many more video interviews coming soon. First question I had for Woojay was what I like to ask everyone, because I just find it very interesting, is how would you describe yourself to someone who doesn't know you? Woojay is blank, or Woojay's music is blank. How do you finish the sentence? And here's what he said. I am, like Woojay is... I'm a Korean keyboardist, engineer, and singer-songwriter, and I make music. My music is like based on usually analog sound, analog acoustic sound, and I also like really pop trendy things. So actually, yeah, they name my music as organic pop, which is kind of really strange term, but yeah. <laughs> I asked him to elaborate a bit on why he has labeled his music organic pop. What does that term mean for him? Every time I release something, I have to choose some kind of like one genre from like some categories. And that's a really hard part. I always want to make something. I think my music is pop, but like usually the surf type is like pop has to be some, some kind of like sample base or like have to contain some like electronic sources. But actually mine is not. And but I don't really want to like be my music as like folk, like country or something. So. I just made that term because like there was no way to explain my music and I just wanted to like think my, my listeners don't be on the like electronic stereotype and if this is pop but like it's analog based, acoustic based, yeah, really comfortable. One by one, we went through the meaning and story behind his singles, starting with him describing the song suggestion. Uh, all of my uh, English titles are a little bit different from the real like Korean titles. And, like for example, the suggestion, uh, the Korean name is uh, Tursu Gobek. Tursu is like the most conventional uh, men's boy's name in Korean. And Gobek is what do you say like in English? Gobek. I mean, like, yeah, proposal. Yeah, exactly. Suggestion was my first song, the first time I actually sang. I really wanted to like name the song as Tan, which is the like Korean term of suggestion, but like I didn't really think that was like catchy enough. So yeah, I just changed the Korean title and remain the English title. Here is what he had to say about the song Highball Dreams. Uh, this one really was kind of dance music and a space song, really like sample loops. Uh, I really wanted to be a uh, producer instead of a singer writer, and it was a duet. Did the duet with a singer songwriter called Jung Chun, and I sent the beat to her, and she made some like cool melodies and lyrics, and yeah, we, we did it together. It was really fun. There, there are two vocals, yeah, you know, like there were like two much chorus, like choirs, and like we, we used like a bunch of like a lot of people to make that large sound. So yeah, it was really tough, <laughs> like over seventy vocal tracks. Yeah, the computer didn't really like. Yeah, here's what he said about thank you. Similar contacts with that suggestion. It has like totally different name from the Korean one. Korean title was Kamjong and like 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 l- l- luxurious of emotion. Like it is, yeah, it is really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, the behind story of that, that language title "Thank You" was I usually just say Kamjong and Hachi as Kamha, just like it's kind of Churimar. What do you say Churimar in English? Uh, like 
Hamsa, which like sounds like thank you. <laughs> so like the whole lyrics, I think, can be interpreted as like thank you in a really sarcastic term. So yeah, I just like the title like thank you. And this one, I, I didn't really produce this thing. My uh my studio's friend, who's also a guitarist producer, he actually produced the song. I'm a, I'm a pianist and keyboardist, but I have a piano solo. Uh, I another pianist actually did that solo, so I didn't really yeah perform in that song. So it was a like great experience to and great experience, great, great opportunity to someone else interpreting my music, someone doing like my job, and yeah, it was really fun. Here's what he said about the song: "Beauty of Reality." Yeah, the the title's English. <laughs> yeah, original English, <laughs> and uh. Actually, it's maybe the biggest song I've ever made. Uh, like huge scale, like a lot of instruments, uh, like huge band sound. I'm not really an experienced vocalist, but uh, I was a bit proud of myself that like I can reach like so like high pitch and like <laughs> yeah, like alips. Yeah. Just... Lastly, here's what he said about Mindstorm. It was like my hobby, so I just did it. From from the like the first step of like uh, composing lyrics to mixing and mastering things, so I just did it all by myself. This is the only one that in the credit it says like music by UJ. So yeah, I really wanted to do that thing. I thought it was, it could be cool because like I, yeah, I can't do that. So <laughs> I asked about do all of your singles have something in common? The message. The sound, something that threads them together, or do you view them as not chapters of the same story, but totally separate projects? In the context of sound, actually, it has to be a little bit similar, or something have something in common because uh, I'm the producer, so yeah, it it should yeah it should have some kind of like similarity in sound, but in terms of message, uh, I think it is like case by case because. I was not really intended, but like usually the listeners just like the first one suggestion and thank you. And even with the uh, recent one, Mindstorm has like some kind of like connect us message. Prop says like, like someone minds change over time. Yeah, I think it's kind of like it makes a story. I asked about what was it like working with Gentune on Highball Dreams? She's one of my like, uh, switching uh, like off. Yeah, yeah, drinking friend. <laughs> so I we're so close. Yeah, uh, actually, we are from uh, the same university. Uh, actually, we never met in that exact university, but uh, in the master master degree and PhD in Seoul University, Seoul National University, and she was in the Kahukwa, the uh, composing. Yeah, we really got close really fast, and uh, actually, that was the Highball Dream was the like, first opportunity to like work with her. Yeah, yeah, we never really, and not not that time, but now actually I'm using the same studio with her. I had a beat, just like the only the instrumental part of the music, and I just wanted to write some melody, but it was not working well, so I just sent her to like for some advice, and she just like loved it so much. She just like gave a phone call. She really wanted to like make some timeline on it, so yeah, I could do it. I let her do that, and like it was so catchy. So okay, let's go this way, and yeah, that's why we became a duet. And it was like last year's, I think it was April or yeah, yeah. And this is like so so summer song, so we had to release it really quickly. So yeah. I asked about if you had to turn one of your previously released singles into a new collaboration. Who would be the perfect artist to collaborate on it? Actually, like from my songs, which I released, actually, I want none of them to be a collaboration because it could be like it could sound a little selfish, but uh, I don't really want somebody to sing my story. It's like it's so personal, so private, and I want to say that thing. I want to say that message. So actually. Yeah, none of them. Uh, there, there was one song which I really wanted to collaborate with my friend. She's also a singer writer, and that was not on the list because uh, it was in the compilation of the album and the record. Actually, it it's kind of on the progress. So yeah, yeah, it, it's secret. <laughs> right. mm, actually, it's my story, but like I really wanted to be interpreted by by somebody else. 
I asked, if you had to turn one of your songs into an OST, what song should it be in for what show? I'm not really a like TV guy, so like I don't really watch TV, but um, <laughs> it's so busy today, so busy today. But recently, my friend of mine, uh, she's also a singer writer, and she just like told me that my recent one, Mindstorm, could be like so like, so good for the sumur sumur taso sumurana, yeah, sumurana, yeah, so famous today. And she said that, so I just saw some like drama clips and things. Oh yeah, this will be great. <laughs> I noted that his album covers don't have one specific aesthetic, one specific look. It's kind of all over the place. So I was wondering, how do you come up with album cover art? How do you choose what to go with? And are you going to continue to experiment? Well, in fact, this is all kind of like trial and, trial and error because I'm not a designer. So yeah, I can't design myself like by, by myself. This is like usually the last part of the album like, releasing process. So. I always be had to, had to be so quick. Yeah, so I I really try like various kind of like album arts. Like sometimes it was illustration, sometimes it was my photo, sometimes it was like someone else's photo, and I just want to find which which actually could be my like uh, own aesthetic. I want to stick to like one specific one, but yeah, my trial and error is not over. So I asked about if there is. Is there a certain process regarding making music for you? Do you follow a certain order of making it? Things like that. Yeah, I write my song with like guitar or piano or something. I usually make the chords for it, chords first because I don't know why, but I think I'm really particularly an instrumentalist. So <laughs> yeah, make the chords, make some catch melodies, and just write something. I wanted to say, I mean, like my story or like some message, like my thoughts or something. Like recording them and like producing them. Like if I say those like too specific, it'll be my like studio tour. So I don't really like talking about it. But yeah, I record myself. I, I have all the equipment. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm spending a lot of money there. So yeah. It's... I asked how he has grown over time as an artist. What skills he's improved at? What is he still working on? Strengths and weaknesses, basically. I was a musician before I my debut because the like signature writing thing was the last thing I did as a musician. So, and the problem was that I had to sing. So <laughs> I, but and honestly, I never really liked singing like whole my life. I never really, I didn't really, really want to like. I didn't like going to Dorebang. I sometimes sing for like making some backing vocals in my producing things or in the stage for like other vocals like in, in a like supportive role but i never really imagined me singing as a main vocal but because i became a singer writer uh, i had to do that and um, i am a totally beginner as a singer sing songwriter so i have like lots of potential to get better and so my i think my singing is like yeah yeah it's getting improved <laughs> all the time I asked about what is next for you. What is in the works? Can you tease anything? I'm in my studio. I'm like really busy today, and like not. I don't have like enough time to do like my producing stuff. But actually, today I'm really uh, focused on my original job, which is a producer like for like other artists. And I'm really doing big jobs today, and I can't really tell because it's all a spoiler. But yeah, so I'm really doing big jobs and uh, like in a like EP or like, like huge album units things and my things maybe the next one will be kind of a summer song uh, I really want to collaborate with one of like just I did in the Heidel dreams and yeah it's just my hope nothing is really planned but I'm yeah I'm contacting with a lot of my friends like if you want some summer song I'll just make it like awesome beat or something so I asked about how do you think about your music career long term, generations from now. How do you want Wu Jie as an artist to be thought of and remembered? My dreams are aren't really big. All of my friends like okay. My dream is like performing in Madison Square Garden or like Tokyo Dome or whatever. But I want to do music and like that's all I dream. And if there's one thing, maybe it'll be like. Getting remembered with my my kind of style, my distinct style. Okay, Blue Jay's music. Okay, this this was his style. I like his sound. Like those kind of some kind of like characteristic thing. So 
I just want to be like remembered as really specific, really characteristic artists. Lastly, I asked if there was anything else he wanted to say about his music, a PSA for listeners, whatever. Um, yeah, actually, I recently had a car accident, and <laughs> just like, yeah, I mean, I'm having I, I'm having tough times. But my body is safe. I'm just like totally okay. But just always watch out for cars. Take care. Be happy. Yeah. Thank you so much, Wu Jie, for the interview. Really excited and rooting for you. And thank you so much, everyone who tuned in today. Stay tuned for a lot more from me on the show, podcast-wise and newsletter-wise. Be sure to subscribe to be in the loop the second this type of interview drops. Howtostand.substack.com I will talk to you all again very soon. Bye, everyone.